Hi, and welcome to the Board With Life Holiday Stocking Stuffer Gift Guide. This is a guide of small games that are inexpensive, uh, between $10 and $30, and they're small enough to fit in a stocking. So, if you're like us, our gaming group, we have a lot of people, and we're not going to buy everybody a $60 game, but we can totally spring for a $10 or $12 game um, to kind of give everybody. Um, I'm going to go through them real quick, and uh, these are just games that we like that are small and inexpensive, so let's get right down to it. First up is Hanabi, the Spiel des Jahres winning uh, game this year. It plays two to five players. Um, it's a card game. It's interesting because you hold your hand of cards facing away from you, and you don't get to see your cards. Everybody else can see their, your cards. And you're collectively trying to build a fireworks show, and you have to communicate with other people what's in their hand, and they have to tell you what's in your hand so you can figure out the correct order to do things. Um, it's a nice little mechanic, and it's something fun and different, and a really fun, good game. Up next, uh, Bonanza by Uwe Rosenberg, the designer of Agricola. This is another card game. Um, it's for two to seven players, and it has another interesting hand mechanic where you can't reorganize the cards in your hand. You have to play them in the correct order, which is fun because oftentimes it forces you into doing something that you wouldn't necessarily want to do. There's a lot of trading in this game, so that uh, really helps the trade mechanic because a lot of times you're just trying to get rid of cards that are in your hand so that you can get to other ones that you really want to play. So it, uh, you might give somebody something that helps them a lot and doesn't help you much just to get it out of the way. Um, we like it a lot. Uh, it's about bean farming because it's Uwe Rosenberg. Now, the very, very popular game, Love Letter. It's a Japanese micro game. They're uh, gaining a lot of traction, and a lot of that was because of Love Letter getting brought over. Um, it is 15 cards, and it's a game uh, where you're trying to figure out what other players have. It fits two to four players, and it's a really well-balanced, really interesting, uh, nice little card game. And now Masquerade. This fits 13 players. It's two to 13 players. It the, fits the most of any of them on our list. It's a lot of fun. It's a bluffing game where uh, you're given a character and they all have different special powers, basically. And you can either tell the truth and say which character you are, or you can claim you're somebody else's character and bluff to get their special powers. The weird thing is you don't always know for sure which character you have because you can switch characters with other people, but you can fake that you're switching and not actually switch. So it gets in this weird thing where sometimes you don't even know if you're lying or not. Um, it's a really fun game. Uh, we like it a lot. And yeah. Next up is Coup. It's set in the very popular world of The Resistance, which is a game you might have played. It's actually pretty similar to Masquerade, and it's another bluffing game. You have two characters this time, and you always know which characters you have. Uh, but if you want to call somebody out on their character, and they're not bluffing, one of your characters dies. So there's pretty dire circumstances, and it's real tough where it's one of those games where you're 90% sure somebody's lying, but you don't, you don't want to risk your characters, because once your two characters are dead, you lose. Um, it's for two to six players. Uh, we like it a lot. Next is an oldie, but a really goodie that I like a lot. It's Gloom. Uh, it has artwork by Edward Gorey, and it's kind of set in his, like, really sad world. Dark, black and white world. And it's a card game, but the cards are actually uh, transparent. They're completely clear with just artwork on them that you put over on top of other cards. So you build up uh, these points on top of cards. So that's a really nice, uh, it's very pretty. It's a very nice way to do that. And basically the point of the game is you're trying to make your characters as sad as possible and then kill them while cheering up people's, uh, the other people's characters. It's for two to four players. Uh, it's small, it's pretty, it's simple, but it's fun. Now Saboteur. Saboteur fits three to ten players, so it's really nice if you've got a big group. This is a game where you're playing um, little dwarves that are mining for things, and you're basically trying to collectively build a pathway by placing cards next to each other um, to get to the, the jewels at the end. But there are secretly saboteurs amongst you who are secretly trying to keep you from being able to do that. Uh, it's a nice game of hidden roles and stuff like that. It's pretty simple, but a lot of fun. It's very inexpensive. We like it a lot. Now, one of our absolute favorite new games. I'm not positive it's actually 
out yet for public. We bought it at a convention, but it will be out very soon. So this might not be able to be for Christmas, but very soon after Christmas. It's One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Basically, the idea is it takes a game of werewolf and puts it all down into one night. You can play the whole thing in 10 minutes. There's no player elimination, and there's no need for a narrator. Um, it's really nice. It's a hidden role game and a deduction game. Uh, we had heard it was really good, and we were like, how can you have the feeling of werewolf in one night? It just doesn't work. It totally does work. We love it, we play it all the time. It's a really quick game. Highly, highly recommend it. All right, that's our holiday list. I'm gonna throw in one bonus thing real quick. It's actually on Kickstarter right now, so you're not gonna get it in time for Christmas, but you could cer certainly order it for somebody for Christmas. Um, and it's called Coin Age. It is the smallest game I've seen. It's a nano game, it consists of one card. It's actually a surprisingly deep area control game where you have coins, like regular coins, to control the areas and say you have a quarter and a quarter's worth four points, but somebody can put a nickel on top of that and that's only worth three points, and then somebody can put a penny on top of that. So you can keep going up and up, you get less points, but you can control the area. So it has a lot of actually pretty deep strategy for literally one card. So you can just keep it in your wallet, it uses spare change, it's this just brilliantly simple idea um, that's very well executed. Um, I highly, highly recommend you get it. And yeah, it's on Kickstarter right now. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry, no news this week. It was a very, very slow news week anyway. Uh, we are taking a little bit of a break, but we're going to be back in January, and we actually have uh, some pretty big surprises coming in January. So you definitely want to keep uh, tuned for that. We're going to hang out with our families for the holidays. I hope you guys do the same and get a lot of awesome games played. We hope we have time to do that. Uh, so we'll see, um, but we are back better than ever, hitting the ground running in January, um, so make sure you guys subscribe, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter so you can keep up with all the stuff while we take a couple weeks break from some video stuff. Um, thanks for subscribing, thanks for liking the show, all that stuff, and we will see you in 2014.